time for the dead man to rise. It's time for the great light to shine. I hear the Spirit say, it's time. Fling wide you heavenly gaze. Let the King of glory in. Let the King of glory in. Come right in on your people's praise. Let the King of glory in, let the King of glory in.
let the light in, open up the windows, let the light in, open up the windows, let the light in, let the light in, let the light in, open up the windows, let the light in, open up the windows, let the light in, open up the windows, let the light in, let the light in, let the light in. Come on, you can do better than that. Let the King of Glory in. Let the King of Glory in. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, open your mouths. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, come on, come on. I didn't tell you to stop. Hallelujah. Get engaged in service. Get engaged in church. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Welcome to Dove Church. Thank God for you looking in on us another time, another Sunday, another time for us to brag on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are blessed in this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And we thank him. We thank him for you. We thank him for your comments. We thank him for your love. We ask you to seed into this house as it is a blessing. It's a good word that comes out of this place, good worship. And we thank God for it. And we trust that everything we do and say is a blessing to you. And now with that, we move fastly into the word. Everybody with whatever device your phone is on and we're going to say our confession and new move fastly into the word. Amen. 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 All right. Everybody repeating after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. That's who I am. Today, I shall be taught Today I shall be taught the infallible, the infallible. Unchanging, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the entrance of your word is not only light, but it's life. We bless everyone in our hearing today that they will go on to be doers. And so, God, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength 
and my Redeemer. Can I ask a few questions, uh, a favor today? If the baby becomes cumbersome, please just take him out until he can get quiet a little bit and then bring him back. Amen? And I'm getting a little feedback, but I need a little more volume. All right? Good, good. Our subject today is kingdom wisdom. Kingdom wisdom. We hear a lot about wisdom, and I talked about it when I was dealing in Proverbs on wisdom. And, and, and scripture came back this week about dealing with wisdom just to bring some more understanding to wisdom, and especially kingdom wisdom. And as we start in, I want to open with this statement. Faith is demonstrated in wisdom. Excuse me. Faith is demonstrated in wisdom. It is what you know from the word of God that helps you operate. The truth is, wisdom must be sought after. And not just any wisdom, but godly wisdom or kingdom wisdom or what the scripture says, wisdom from above. You have to ask for wisdom. James 1 and 5. Not our scripture text, but it confirms what I just said. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives to some liberally without reproach. He gives it to you without feeling ashamed that he gave it to you. Amen. And it will be given to him, but let him ask in what? What's the next word? Faith. Let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. So wisdom and faith are partners. So to actually to operate in faith well is to operate in wisdom well too. Because if you're not wise about what you have faith over, you will ask amiss. You will ask wrong. You can't ask him believing in faith for somebody else's car. That's not wisdom. That's bordering into uh, another type of wisdom and it's bordering in covetousness. Amen? Amen? All right, all right. In this world, there are two kinds of wisdoms that operate in this world. The wisdom of the kingdom, number one, which is from above, and the wisdom of Satan, which is in the world. The Bible says that children of darkness are wise. Woo. While we can hate them for prospering, they do prosper. They're wise. They invest their money. They pay for where they want to go. If they want change in legislation, they put their money behind it in this country. Ooh. 
So wisdom is in operation in both worlds. The demonic world and the world of Satan, the world of the flesh, and it's operating in the kingdom. But the thing that should not happen is that there is a mix of godly wisdom and demonic wisdom. You cannot mix them. You can't trust God and operate in the wisdom of the world. Amen? Amen. Let's move fastly into our scripture text for this, this, this time. James 3, 13 through 18. And everything is in New King James Version today. And here begins the reading. James 3, 13, 3, 13 through 18. And it says, it starts with a question. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom, everybody say this wisdom, does not descend from above but is earthly sensual and demonic. It's the wisdom that says it's okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, but everybody doing a little something to get by. You in two worlds. And you must decide I'm going to operate in one. I'm going to trust God or I'm not. Come on. Amen. See, we want it to be gray when it's got to be black or white. Amen. 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 For where, and here, here comes the fruit of the demonic kingdom. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil things are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and of good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Oh, that said a lot. My God. Well, let's go back and unpack it. Who is wise? Let him show by good conduct. See, if you're wise, it shows. In your conduct. When you are unwise, it shows in your conduct. My God. It's, it's not rocket science. It ain't, it's, not, it's not even deep. In this sense, wisdom and understanding are like faith. They are invisible inner qualities. If we are wise or understanding, it is fair to expect that this invisible inner quality would show itself in our regular life. If you have faith, it shows. It shows. Here James told us how to judge if a person really is wise and understanding. His works are done in meekness and in wisdom. Whoa. His works are done in meekness 
and in wisdom. So I need to break down what is meekness? What is meekness? Meekness is the ability to operate without pushing yourself forward. You can preach, but you don't boast about it. You can sing, but you don't boast about it. You can cook, but you don't boast about it. Even though I have the tendency to ask people after they eat something that I made, is it all right? I'm not boasting. I'm just trying to confirm that I, I hit it or missed it. And the low-down people that, that hang out with me always say, keep practicing. <laughs> they ain't no good. Keep practicing. That means make it again. Let's see if you hit it. The, she just said, hallelujah, won't he do it? That, that, that's what I'm talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, 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 it, it's, it's meekness is done. I do it to the glory of God. And, and, and if nobody does this, I'm all right. I don't have to urge them to say anything. Woo. Jesus did everything in meekness. How do I know that? Because the Bible says he would tell people, don't tell nobody. Don't say nothing to anybody. Don't, don't, don't tell them. What would they do? As soon as they got away from him. Jesus did this. He did this. He did this. Hey, hey, I can hear you. Say something back to me. Say something back to me. They weren't told. That's meek. Oh. True wisdom is evident by meek manner. True wisdom. You just do it. You don't want anybody to say anything about it. Although every one of us likes to be confirmed that we're all right. But this system is so designed, when you see the fruit of what you've operated in, it'll be, it will be your confirmation. That you're all right. Amen. Amen. Those who do their good works in a way designed to bring attention to themselves show a lack of true wisdom. It's a lack. It shows immaturity. The first wisdom that our text identifies is earthly or the flesh wisdom. This is the wisdom of the world. And it says, how do we know it's the wisdom of the world? Because it's bitter envy and self-seeking. These are the opposites of meekness. These are the opposites of meekness of wisdom. They may point to a person who has a fight-provoking mentality. Notice me. I done this. I'm that good. The next thing that it says about this, the, the, the kingdom that's not of uh, uh, the, 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 the whole thing about wisdom that is not of the kingdom, it is bitter jealousy and rivalry. Ooh. You can't pride yourself on that. Rivalry. Who has this? The worst thing that happens in the church world is, 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 is as nobody seeks God for individualism. They, they, it's almost a copycat syndrome. They're doing this, and, and, and I want to do that, and because they have this, I have to do that. I, you, you know what? You, you will run yourself raggedy trying to keep up. 
What has God told you to do? That's what you do. And you stay in that lane. I will never put myself out and sell tickets and say, I'll be in concert next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Because I know my lane. Do you understand what I'm saying? I just barely can hum a tune. But you know where you are. So I don't covet somebody that can sing. Now make no error, I know if you can sing. <laughs> I don't have to be an expert, and the crowd doesn't either. They know at an instant. When there is bitter envy and self-seeking, it shows a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, and demonic. When envy and self-seeking show up, the companions are earthly, sensual, and demonic. Earthly, having only this life in view. So if you are only earthly, you do not have a heavenly perspective. Which means, if you don't have a heavenly perspective, what you're doing is limited to the earth because it doesn't give God glory. It's a pretense, but I'm just fronting because it's really me. Woo. The next one is, 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 is a sexual word, sensual. And it's, it's animalistic because when it's sensual, it's appealing to the gratification that moves the flesh. It makes one want to be sexy. You ministering, but you Rico Suave. You dragging it somewhere. That's the wisdom of the world. Demonic, because it's demon inspired. What gets pulled out is what the demon wants to be exposed. Whoa. So you're not thinking about what, you're thinking about who. I'm watching the gospel world. Sometimes when I watch the program, I don't know whether I'm watching gospel or I'm watching, what, what am I watching? Things are so tight and so revealing, it's like, what, what, what is your pull? I wanted to do an experiment one time, and that is that, that I will put everybody in a basic plain choir robe <laughs> with flats. No heels, no makeup, no earrings. Now sing. I don't even want you to rock. Stand there. Sing. Let's hear the gospel. Does that make sense? 
preach without a ham and organ. Do, 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 do. Don't do nothing. Will we be effective? We have to decide what we're appealing to and how we're appealing to it. And some folk would say, this is what this generation does. For every level, there is a generation that operates differently. But I think that, 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 that for each, each generation, there is the grace of God for that generation. To minister to your present age. And the hymn that said, your calling to fulfill. We don't expect you to go backward, but we do expect you to stay in the holy vein. That's without exception. There is a holiness that is timeless. It's timeless. If it was holy in Abraham's day, it's holy today. And we want to make it a style of dress. It's not even that. Because when you're holy, your dress reflects. See, they ought to know who we are if, if we're just in a t-shirt and jeans. Hey, something different about you. Without you opening your mouth and telling them, I'm evangelist. The Bible says, in this kingdom, there is confusion and every evil thing. I was monitoring church earlier, and I was watching confusion trying to rise. So you saw me go out. So I challenged some things. Know this, that if you come in that door, I'm watching. While we're worshiping, you ought to be worshiping. But if you're walking in and out and stuff, I got a problem. And, and, and so I, we address it. Because if a confusion is allowed to remain, the Bible says that the door is open for every evil work to come in here. You can't get delivered, you can't get free, set free because evil and uh, two kingdoms cannot reside that way. Huh? They cannot and you can't make them reside. How many works did it say? How many evil works? Every evil work. What evil work can you think about? Every evil work. What's his name? Every evil work. Contention, strife, wickedness, jealousy, indifference. I don't care. Woo. And you know why you don't need that environment? Because when you come into the presence of the Lord... There is fullness of that. You get your healing. You get your deliverance. You get a way made. You get doors open for you. But if you can't even sit in an environment of deliverance, but you won't deliver it, but you won't stay where you need help. I go to my doctor's office for an appointment and I don't walk out into the hallway or go somewhere and run back in. Is he ready for me? Is he ready for me? I wait in the environment until it's time to see because I'm there for help. And we can't set the tone in the front and in the back, everything going on. Come on. 
Come on, come on. And then you want to wear your pastor out or, or preach out and say, pray for me. If you only understood what we wanted to pray for you. I pray that when it's time to worship that you throw yourself in. And you won't expect for me to say, any meeny habra cadabra wuta and the end of the baya temple. Can we talk about heavenly wisdom now? <laughs> James 3, 17 through 18 gives us the character of heavenly wisdom. But I want you to read this line repeated after me. This is the first line of 17. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first, is first, is first, is first, is first, is first pure. pure. Stop there. That made the distinction. The other things will enhance that distinction, but the Bible says the wisdom from, the, from above is pure. It's without being tainted by the things of the world. Which means that's the wisdom you want. You want the real stuff. Oh, God. Because it's pure. It doesn't always feel good, but it's pure. You know what? I, I, um, in America, we do some things with food and, and products and stuff. We, 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 some of us think we like Italian and some of us think we like Chinese. Until you eat real Chinese and real Italian. And you say, no, 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 this, this not, this, 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 this not Olive Garden. Come on, work with me about five minutes. And you think you like lasagna. And you think you like uh, antipasto. You think you like a whole bunch of stuff. But you don't even have a concept. And you know what blew my mind? When we went to Italy and they put antipasto on the table, I was looking for cheese and a whole bunch of stuff. Piled on them. And they had some nice little meat slices folded up on the board. Antipasto. I said, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I, and the sad part about it, once I decided to engage past my mindset, I realized that it was good. And I mean, not just good. It was good. Very good. And, 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 and it was so good till I said, I went back with a, with a hatred toward the American stuff. I said, I don't even halfway want y'all no more. The same as with Chinese. So I'm saying pure. Pure wisdom is what you should desire because sometimes the stuff that you get used to operating as wisdom is tainted with the world. It has an off taste. It doesn't have the craftsman touch to it. My God. 
first pure, then the next thing that happens. When you know it's the wisdom of God, comes it, the next word is peaceable. It's gentle. Willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. We such hypocrites. I, it, it, sometimes it just bothers me how God talks to us so much. He tells us one thing one day and he tells us another thing another day. Then he changes his mind and he tells us what he told us before. And we go back to that we bounce back to something else. God is not schizophrenic. What he said yesterday he meant today and forever. He's the same every day. We change according to our mood. And how do we make it godly? We have a, 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 an emotional outburst. Amen. Amen. Let's unpack this. But wisdom is from above. God's wisdom also has fruit. James said it in, in 13. It, the, 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 the fruit of wisdom is, is meekness. Then the next thing he says, first, 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 pure. It means it's, 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 it's absent of sinful attitude. Pure. Absent of attitude. Wow, what a concept. Absent. Then the next thing is it's peaceable. He is gentle and kind, although in reality he has every reason. Talking about God. God is gentle and kind, although in reality, he has every reason to be stern and punitive toward men. And every time somebody crosses us, we want to take them out. Kill them. How many people have we murdered this week? Lord, just kill them. Take them all the way out. Because they just mess with me. Kill them. They ain't worthy of nothing. I, I, I even love people that, that you can be in relationship for, with them for years and give them your heart, give them your money, give them your resource, and you have one issue with them and you ain't nothing no more. You ain't family, you ain't friend, you ain't my mother. You ain't my father, you ain't nobody. I'm so glad today that God is God. Because if he had to cut us off, he would have cut us off a long time ago. Because you done messed up a lot. I've messed up a lot in these years. But God has been good. He chose to be merciful where he could have been judgmental. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's peaceable. Yes. Yes. You know why? <laughs> God says, <laughs> this is what God says over you. Thank you, Jesus. He said, he said, you're my investment and I'm not giving up on you that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've put interest into you. My son died for you, so you're my investment. I'm going to have to keep working with you. I'm going to have to shake you up sometime, but you're mine. Yeah. You belong to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not giving up on you. Yeah, you're going to mess up tomorrow, and you're going you're gonna to do something. You're going to get mad. You're going to do a little cussing. You're going to do something. Somebody better shout hallelujah because you know I'm talking right in this house. Because some days you don't give him the time of day. You don't give him what he's due. And he still doesn't judge you. Everybody take a good deep breath. Thank him for grace. No, 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 you don't understand what I'm talking about. Somebody can't do that. And you have the opportunity to walk in the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, hey, Holy Ghost, is merciful. 
and that's kind. And he's, he's, he, he's slow to get angry. It doesn't say he won't ever get angry, but it says he's slow about it. He don't go to 10 immediately. He started point, point something, something, something down. Somebody else say, thank you, God, I don't feel the heat. I, I, I don't feel the heat. And I want you to stay woke because I'm woke when you're doing everything you're doing. We have such an awesome God in our life that, 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 that it, it, it's indescribable how good he is toward us. He's indescribable. I sit here as a part and stand here as a part of a nationality that has been pushed around and pushed back and mistreated. Everybody that comes across the water think they have a right to mistreat us. From the gas station to the mechanic shop. We're just talking about how if you're not careful, they, they think you, you can cheat them easy. From buying your home and getting appraisals. Till if you show up, it's going to appraise one way. If somebody else show up, oh, I'm talking good and it's going all, all across it. But in the midst of that, I can stand and say, God is good. God is a keeper. You know why I, I love God? Because my steps are ordered. <laughs> and my times are in his hand. <clears throat> Don't get crazy. They're not in Jan's hand. They're not in Rose's hand. They're not in Britt and Jarrell's hand. They're not in Lou's hand. I love them all. They're not in Marcy's hand. My times are in the hand of the Lord. And he determines which one. I will move. Let, let me move forward. I just got toe up a little bit. Wisdom is willing to yield, not stubborn or obstinate. Doesn't always have to be your way. This was a rough one for me because I said, do it because I say do. You have to, you have to be flexible. And that doesn't mean going to sin. You flex in and out of sin. I'm flexible. Wisdom is full of mercy. Full of mercy. Generous in showing mercy. Wisdom is full of good fruits. This wisdom from above is full of good fruit. So when you operate in this wisdom of the kingdom, asking God, what is it that I need to do? Show me how to operate Help me to walk in meekness as I walk out the plan you have for my life. It is full of good works. And how do you know you have good works? They're in demonstration and manifestation. Something good comes out of it. The other day, a young lady, and I told them this in, in class yesterday, and I'm almost done, in, in, in training yesterday, that there was a young uh, uh, girl that was down the street. Her name is Autumn. And, and Autumn, since she's been back for the summer, she visits her grandmother in the house across the street from the church. She came to the summer program, I think it was four and a half, five years ago. And she enjoyed it so much, she, she wasn't going to come at first and she would watch the kids. I want to come. And she got enough nerve to come over and ask me, can I come? I said, yes. And so everybody fell in love with her, and she had a best friend in, in, on the staff. Her best friend was Yvonne. <laughs> and Autumn was, by, was about to get left for the field trip, like I hope some of you all won't get left this day. <laughs> and Yvonne became her intercessor and advocate and said, don't leave. We can't leave without all. And everybody on the bus, we can't leave without. 
And here she come running out the house, hair pulled back in a wet ponytail. Well, she's come to visit me about three times this year. Her grandmother brought her, want to come and say hi to you. He knocked on the door. I said, hi. At first, I looked at her and said, I said, who are you? I, I, she, it was fire. And she had a little purple in her hair. I said, hi. I think I called her another season. She said, no, it's autumn. And, uh, <laughs> And I said, hey, baby, I said, you look good. I know who you are. You look good. <laughs> and she said, hi, Pastor. She said, I want to come to the program, but I'm going down to Tennessee for, for the rest of the summer. And I said, okay, I'm going to miss you a lot. Well, this week she bounced back. She hasn't gone to Tennessee yet. She's going. And she said, it's my birthday. I'll be 10, I'm 10 years old. I turned 10 Monday of this week. And I said, okay. And I made up my mind, I'm going to buy a card and put some money in it and give it to her, which is what I did. Doesn't mean I'm doing a birthday, you know, a cavalcade or something. I'm going to play Stevie for the rest of y'all. <laughs> but what she had on her chest was the scripture from the Salvation Army camp that she's attended since she left ours five years ago. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. You know why it, it messed me up? Because that was my trial sermon scripture. And God reminded me again. Don't be ashamed. And he sent Amber on her birthday week with the Salvation Army camp to say, the seed is still moving. Yes. And she's sweetly saved, yes. and she loves God, yes. and I just rejoiced in it. So I'm telling you, wisdom from above is first pure. Yes. Yes. And peace. Full of good fruits that produce long after you not on the sea. Full of good fruits. Your life got to be full of something. But it's got to come from the right source. Full of good fruits. Blessings to you. Get the wisdom from above. Get the wisdom from above. Ask for it. If you heard our message today, God loves you today. Give him your heart, give him your life. God isn't through with you because he made an investment in you. And he made that investment long before the world was made. It was before the foundation of the world he's, that he loved this world and he gave Jesus. And Jesus would dare say, come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Give him your heart, give him your life because he loves you today. And if you're out there and you heard us, here is the message and here is the confession we're going to say together while this church says it with you. If you're in this room today, you haven't surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, it's available to you today. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Come on, ready? Let's go. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you died on a cross. Three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, and with this faith, I am saved. Blessings to you now. Give them a good praise. Celebrate them. To all of our viewers, we are so grateful for the time you spent with us today. We trust this presentation was a blessing to you. We pray that it inspires you and enhances your spiritual learning. Also, we encourage your financial support of this ministry as we continue to reach the world, knowing that God will bless your giving. You can use our PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, and that will take you to our PayPal page. Thanks again. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.